Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ruston present Space Patrol! <laughs> High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! <laughs> In today's transcribed adventure, Buzz and Happy are investigating a space factory revolving in an orbit around the planet Venus. Suddenly, they find themselves locked in a freight handling chamber floating in the middle of the room. They've cut the artificial gravity field. We're completely weightless. Well, how are we going to get down to the floor? <laughs> oh, my head. Smoke and rockets, Commander. We were pulled up, up to the ceiling. There's the floor down there below us. They reversed the gravity field. The in this room is toward the ceiling. Well, now how are we going to get down to the floor? We'll get down to it all right, the hard way, I'm afraid. They'll reverse the gravity field from floor to ceiling till they break every bone in our bodies. We'll return in just a moment with today's Space Patrol adventure, the Venus Space Factory. Hi, gang. Space Patrol Jack Tufel reporting to you from the Terra Airport. Just got back from a trip to Venus, and boy, do I need supercharging. Well, I'll just have myself a Space Patrol breakfast with one of the super cereals, Rice Checks or Wheat Checks. They're bite-sized, you know, and so easy to eat and so different and delicious, the commander made them official cereals of the Space Patrol. Try them yourself, gang, and don't wait. Not for a swell treat like Rice Checks and Wheat Checks. I am today. And say, gang, here's something important. We are swamped with orders for space binoculars. We have plenty of them, but we just can't mail them out fast enough. So if you're waiting for space binoculars, please be patient. We'll soon be caught up. Well, i got to go get supercharged right now. See you later, gang. And now, today's Space Patrol adventure, the Venus Space Factory. Swinging in wide orbits around the planet Venus are two gigantic constructions, popularly known as space factories. Power is obtained from the sun by use of solar energy reflectors. These privately owned factories are inspected at regular intervals by space patrol personnel to see that United Planets regulations are observed. Right now, in the control section office of one of the factories, space patrol inspector Curtis is talking to Vincent Trowbridge, owner of the plant. I've completed the inspection, Mr. Trowbridge. Hmm. Find anything wrong, Inspector Curtis? No, nothing serious. The heat insulation on the mercury vapor conduits needs replacing. Oh, you aren't going to enter that on a report, are you? Well, I should. But I'll overlook it this time if you promise to have it repaired by the time of my next official visit here. Of course. Uh, You just play ball with me, Curtis, and I'll play ball with you. Fine. Oh, uh, Mr. Trowbridge. Yes, Curtis. About the investment you're handling for me, uh, is everything all right? Well, uh, it doesn't look good right now. What, can I get my 10,000 credits back? Perhaps in a few months. A few months? Well, Mr. Trobit, you said last month we could expect a quick profit. Yes, I also said there were certain risks involved. You remember that, don't you? Yeah, but all our other investments, they turned out all right. They were for small amounts, 100 credits or so. I was counting on that money. You put me in a terrible spot. I didn't put you on the spot, Curtis. You insisted I take your money. It uh, was your money, wasn't it? Of course it was, except for a few hundred I borrowed. But it has to be paid back right away. Well, I'm afraid there is nothing I can do. Look, you've got to help me. If the Space Patrol finds out I've been having business dealings with one of the firms I inspect, I'll lose my job. Well, you didn't worry much about that when you were winning. I was foolish, I admit it. But I was relying on your business judgment. This gets out of... I'm finished. Hmm. Perhaps I should have realized you weren't in a position to risk so much money. Tell you what. Suppose I return those 10,000 credits to you. Will you, Mr. Tobridge? Now, understand, Curtis. I only do this out of the goodness of my heart. This is just a loan, you understand. It's my money you're getting. Your 10,000 is still invested with another firm, and I can't touch it. I'll pay you back every credit when the other deal begins to pay off. Yeah. Oh, uh, in the meantime, uh, you're in a position to do me a favor. Well, what do you have in mind? Well, you you also inspect the other space factory, don't you? Stan Larkin's plant? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, what's his record? Excellent. Why? Mm-hmm. 
Uh, perhaps you've been somewhat lax in your inspection. Somewhat indulgent, shall we say. Oh, no. I'm always very careful. Yes, but there is always room for improvement, Curtis. From now on, you can even be more careful when you check on Larkin. Uh, when are you due there again? Two days from now. Well, just make sure you examine his entire factory thoroughly. I'm sure you'll be able to find that Larkin is guilty of several uh, irregularities. You aren't asking me to turn in a false report. Would you rather a true one be turned in on you? All right, Mr. Crowbridge. <laughs> oh, uh, this may ease your conscience a little. I have a couple of men working at Larkin's factory. You wouldn't have to use your imagination too much in reporting violations. Commander Corey's office. Cadet Happy here. Yes, sir. All right, Major, I'll tell him. Well, what is it, Happy? No, it's Major Robertson, Commander. He says Inspector Curtis is due back at Venus City headquarters tomorrow. Uh, he's been on sick leave. Hap, remind me to space a phone, Curtis, in the morning regarding the space factory report. Yes, sir. I can't understand what's happened to Stan Larkin's operation. Well, who is this Larkin, sir? He owns one of the two space factories circling Venus. The last two inspection reports have been pretty bad. Till three weeks ago, Larkin's plant had a very high rating. Well, what's the trouble, sir? Curtis listed six counts of defective safety equipment, including the main airlock. When he returned for another checkup two weeks later, three of the previous citations hadn't been corrected. What about the Trowbridge station? Oh, that's excellent. You know, it looks to me as though Larkin's trying to cut corners. It's not a very smart move with a new government contract still sitting on the Secretary General's desk. That's well, not a smart move in any case, Happy. Any negligence in one of those space factories could cost the life of every man in the plant. First, I'll see what Curtis has to say about the situation. Then I may pay Larkin a visit. Curtis at Venus City calling Trowbridge at space factory number two. Curtis calling Crowbridge at Space Factory Number Two. Crowbridge here. Go ahead, Curtis. I just thought I ought to let you know. Corey's going to blast off for a visit to Larkin's factory. Is he coming here too? He didn't mention it in our space phone conversation. But better be prepared just in case he does. I am always prepared. Uh, did he question your report on Larkin's? Oh, no, not yet. But I'm worried. I don't want to get into this any deeper. Now look, Curtis. Stop worrying. Just take it easy. But I won't make any more false reports. Well, we'll talk about it later. When is Corey due at Larkin's? At about 900 hours universal start time tomorrow. All right, Curtis. Throw bridge out. Uh, now, what can my men do to convince Corey that Larkin isn't? You can start decelerating now, Happy. We're nearly on the factory's orbit. It certainly doesn't look very solid, Commander. Like a bunch of wheels strung together with wire. Well, it would never do on a planet, of course, but out here in space with no gravity pull, it's strong enough. Where do we join airlocks, sir? At the end of that tube projecting from the circular structure. We'll make our approach from the other side. It looks like we've got a clear approach on this vector, sir. Right. Let's contact Larkin and tell him we're coming in for inspection. Commander Corey, I've been in the manufacturing business for 20 years. This is the first time I've been accused of mismanagement. All you're being accused of right now, Mr. Larkin, is failure to correct certain faulty equipment after receiving a citation from our inspector. But I tell you, I ordered it corrected. Did you check to see if your orders were carried out? Well, frankly, no, I didn't. In the past, I've never found it necessary to check up on my employees. Mr. Larkin, our inspectors have a regular procedure to follow. Would you say that in the past, Curtis has ignored defective equipment? I don't know whether Curtis has ignored defective equipment or not, but I haven't. Well, then what about those last two reports? What about the complaints of impurities in your products? Commander, would you like to inspect this factory right now? I certainly would, but you haven't answered my questions. Maybe we'll both know the answers after inspection. I manufacture plastics, not excuses. All right, Larkin. I'll call my cadet and we'll inspect the plant. I'll say this for you, Larkin. For all, your factory has run very efficiently. We haven't finished the tour yet, Commander. With these accusations against me, I think it only fair that you make a complete inspection. All right. What's next? Well, you've seen the crew's living quarters, the power control station, and the process control room. 
As I recall your inspector's last report, there was a defective airlock in number two loading chamber. That's right. Has it been repaired? I ordered it repaired. Come with me. You can see for yourselves. Oh, here, uh, wait. You'd better both put on heavy coats if you're going in there. Why? Is it cold in there? About five degrees below zero centigrade. Uh, the coats are here in the locker. Here's one for you, Commander. Thank you. And here you are, Cadet. Thanks, Mr. Larkin. Oh, why is the loading chamber so cold? This chamber is where we keep the hexaplast sheets. They move directly into the hold of a cargo ship, which is also at five degrees below zero. Hexaplast? What's that? It's a light but very strong plastic, Happy. It's called the material with a memory. A memory? Mm -hmm. Oh, excuse me, Commander, the intercom. Larkin at chamber two. Yes? Can it wait? Oh, but I'm... Oh, all right. I'll, I'll be right back. Commander, I've got to go back to the central control room. Two of my technicians seem to have misinterpreted my instructions on a process routine. Uh, why don't you examine loading chamber two, and I'll join you in a minute. Of course, go ahead. Thanks, Commander. Now, let's go in, Happy. We'd better secure the door to hold the temperature down. Oh, it's not as cold in here as I expected it to be. It's a dry cold, low humidity. These coats are pretty heavy. Boy, there sure isn't much room to move around with all these bales stacked in here. Now, there's the airlock at the other end of the chamber. Let's check the indicator and see if there's any leakage. Yes, sir. Oh, by the way, Commander, what did you mean when you said hexaplast was a material with a memory? Well, it can be molded into a certain shape at a fairly high temperature. Then when it's cold, the way it is now, it flattens out. Uh-huh. When the temperature rises, it springs back into its original form. It's as though its molecules remembered what shape to take. <laughs> what was that? I don't know. It sounded as though something snapped. Oh, look, up up there. That top bale came undone. Yeah, somebody did a sloppy job of packing it. <laughs> oh, there goes another one. Hey, look, it's moving. The cargo's shifting. We've got to get out of here, Happy. Hey, Commander! Commander, what's happening? The hexapest. Expanding to its original shape. Open the door. Hurry. It's locked, sir. We've got to get out of here in a hurry. If we don't, the hexaplast will crush us against the wall. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. This is Captain Dick Tufeld reporting the morning news direct from Terra City. First, the headlines. Commander Corey offers projectoscope to boys and girls on Earth. Space Patrol mail bags jammed with orders. The commander interrupts all communication lanes to warn projectoscope is offered for limited time only. Those are the headlines, now the details. Today, Buzz Corey is again offering all boys and girls a chance to send for the new six-inch pocket projectoscope. This streamlined blue and yellow plastic model in the shape of the commander's rocket ship has been designed to do three important things. One... The flash on and off so rapidly it can be used as a signal light. Two, to throw a steady beam of light so it can also be used as a flashlight. Three, to throw pictures on the wall by means of a special strip of film. Response from Earth has been terrific. Orders have been pouring in without let-up. But supplies are still big and work is on schedule. When a letter is received, a projectoscope is mailed at once. But Commander Corey warned in a special bulletin that the projectoscope could be offered for a limited time only. So, gang, send for your projectoscope today. Just buy a box of rice checks or wheat checks. Then, with your name and address, send 35 cents in coin and a rice checks or wheat checks box top to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. This offer good only in the USA and may be withdrawn at any time. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. <laughs> And now back to today's adventure, the Venus Space Factory. Vincent Trowbridge, owner of a space factory revolving around Venus, has forced a space patrol inspector to turn in false reports against Stan Larkin, owner of a competing space factory. Commander Corey and Cadet Happy went to the Larkin plant to investigate. While in loading chamber number two of the space factory, the two space patrolmen find themselves in danger of being crushed by a rapidly expanding plastic known as hexaplast as the temperature rises in the chamber. Stand back, Happy. Let me try that door. Yes, sir. Somebody must have locked it after we got in here. Do you suppose it was Larkin? Ha, look out! Huh? 
Oh, wow, if you hadn't yelled, sir, I'd have been smashed between those two blocks of hexaglass. It's going to keep expanding till it fills every inch of this chamber. That's hard as rock. Yes, after it reaches its original shape. Commander, could it break through the hull of the chamber? Uh, By the time it does, it won't matter to us. Hey, wait. You've given me an idea. There's a bale that hasn't broken open yet. Help me drag it to the door. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's move fast, Happy. This bale feels soft. Uh, now let's wedge it between the stack of hexaplast and the door. A little tighter. Commander, I can feel it expanding. Stand back. When those metal packing strips burst, they'll lash up like clips. There it goes. It's swelling up. Let's hope that door is the weakest part of the chamber. <laughs> Hey, it works, sir. The door's open. Let's get out of here quickly. Hey, Commander, it's colder out here in the passage than it was in the chamber. Let's get to the control room. I want to hear Larkin's explanation of this. Uh, here's the control room, Hap. Larkin. Commander, you're safe. And you know what happened in the loading chamber. Yes. Uh, did you secure the outer door to the passage? Yes, I did. Now, maybe you'll tell me who locked the refrigeration door. Locked it? It wasn't locked. Oh, no. We had to use expanding hexaplast to break it open. You you were in there with that wild plastic? Where did you think we were, Larkin? I don't know. I, I settled the argument between the two technicians. Then I came back here and checked the instruments. I could see the temperature was rising in the loading chamber. And what made it rise? The thermostat must have been defective. But it's all right now. Even if the hexaplast bursts the chamber hull, we won't lose any air in the other sections of the factory. But I'd still like to know what made the temperature rise and the door lock just when Cadet Happy and I were in that chamber. Commander, you don't think it was deliberate? I don't know, Larkin. But somebody here is guilty of criminal negligence. As of this moment, your factory is officially closed. Closed? But why? Safety. One incompetent or vicious man in this space factory could destroy the lives of everyone aboard it. I'm going to order a ship to be sent here from Venus to remove every one of your staff to Venus City until we can have a complete investigation. I'll assign a space patrol ship to cruise alongside this factory in its orbit around Venus to protect your interests. Very well, Commander. I'll order a complete shutdown. All right, Larkin. Come on, Happy. We'll get to our ship and space upon Venus City. Then we'll head for Terra and organize an investigation. Curtis calling Trowbridge aboard Space Factory Number 2. Curtis calling Vincent Trowbridge at Space Factory Number 2. Trowbridge here. Go ahead, Curtis. Are there any cargo ships loading or unloading at the factory? No, no ships are due till tomorrow. Why? I'm coming there to talk to you. What am I? I'll tell you when I get there. Now, isn't that rather stupid? You aren't due to inspect for another ten days. I'm nearly there. Have the airlocks ready. Why can't you tell me what you want over the space phone? We're both on the scramble circuit. I've got to talk to you. In person. All right, come ahead. But if you are in trouble, don't expect... Commander, shouldn't we be on the Terra Vector? I've changed course, Happy. We're heading for the other space factory on the opposite side of Venus. Why? Is something wrong at the Trowbridge plant? Well, so far it's not as serious as what went on at Larkin's. I've been getting some interesting information from Major Robertson, though. Trowbridge has been putting out some defective plastics, too, worse than Larkin's. Well, was it in the inspector's report, sir? No. The Bureau of Standards discovered it. It should have been detected by our inspector at the factory. Yet he's consistently given Trowbridge a high efficiency rating. Well, does the same man check both factories? Yes, George Curtis. Well, maybe he needs a vacation. Yeah, he seemed to be right on his toes when he checked Larkin's plant. The city space control was supposed to notify me when they located Curtis. He's off duty for 18 hours, so he must be somewhere in the city. Oh, there's another collection of wheels in the viewscope, sir. We're getting close to the Trowbridge factory. Curtis, tell me what was important enough to bring you here to the factory at this time. I found out what your men tried to do to Corey with the hexiplast. You might have killed him. Oh. Oh, wouldn't that have put Larkin in a hot spot? It is. This will probably finish him. Yeah, but you don't know the rest of it. Corey had the whole crew, including Larkin, flown to Venus City for an investigation. I'll be called in to testify. So what? That close call, Corey Ed will convince him that Larkin isn't fit to operate a factory. Now, ah, you just calm down. Go back to Venus City and be there when he calls you. But, Trowbridge, don't you realize? Corey will probably give Larkin and his crew a brain test and find out about your spies. Uh, I, I hadn't thought of that. Corey will find out you're behind this whole scheme and find out about me. You know, I'm glad you did come here, Curtis. You can find me to Venus before Corey organizes his investigation. 
We'll have to eliminate those spies of mine before they're given the brainograph test. No, I won't have any part of it. All you have to do is keep your mouth shut. Being a space patrol inspector, you won't be asked to take a brainograph test. Not if you play calm. Commander Corey aboard Terra 5 calling Venus Space Factory number 2. That's Corey. Shut up. Corey aboard Terra 5 calling Space Factory number 2. Now keep your mouth shut, Curtis. Let me do the talking. Venus Space Factory number 2 to Commander Corey. Throwbridge here. Mr. Trowbridge, I want to talk to you on official business. Why, of course, Commander. You'll be ready to join airlocks with the factory in about three minutes. Uh, three minutes? Yes. Well, come ahead, Commander. Thanks, Mr. Trowbridge. Corey, out. You recognize my ship. Why didn't you stall him till I could get away? It's too late now. He'd see you anyway. Don't worry. Just do as I say and we'll both be all right. Just get back in that living compartment and lock the door. I'll handle Corey. What are you going to do? Just leave that to me. Go on. Get in that compartment. Go on, Happy. Yes, sir. Well, Commander Corey, this is rather a surprise. Hello, Mr. Trowbridge. I recognized our inspector's ship at number two airlock. Is he in here? Yes, he's inspecting my factory. It was my impression that he was here four days ago. Oh, you mean you didn't know he was coming here today? I'm afraid Inspector Curtis is a very thorough young man. I've been getting quite a going over from him. You have? Why? Well, I'll let him tell you. He's probably in the handling room now. Uh, this way, please. And second thought, maybe I'd better tell you myself. Frankly, I tried to deceive Curtis on his last trip here. And I thought I succeeded. Deceive him? Uh, How? Some defective insulation. Well, what about it? Well, I could tell that Curtis wasn't feeling very well. And I thought I'd put it over that he wouldn't notice. Well, I found out differently. He's going over the entire plant with a vengeance. After I see Curtis, there are a couple of other matters I want to discuss with you, Mr. Trowbridge. Well, certainly. You'll find Curtis right in here, Commander. The handling room. Just go right in. Hey, hey, hey. You... On your feet, get through that door after him. Oh, oh, oh. Commander. Commander, I can't touch the floor. What happened? We're floating. Trowbridge cut off the artificial gravity in here. We're going right toward the ceiling. Now, take it easy. When you reach the ceiling, push yourself gently toward the floor. Yes, sir. Gently now. You might bounce back up again. When your feet touch, make your way carefully toward the door. Remember, we're completely weightless. I can reach the ceiling. Oh, here it goes. That's it. We're going down. Yeah, like a couple of feathers. Oh, this is the strangest feeling. Easy now. Your feet are almost touching the floor. Oh, oh, my head. Smoke and rockets, Commander. We were pulled up, up to the ceiling. There's the floor down there below us. Trowbridge reversed the gravity field. The pull in this room is toward the ceiling. How are we going to get down to the floor? The hard way, I'm afraid. Trowbridge can keep reversing the gravity field from floor to ceiling till he batters us unconscious. Look, sir. Everything that wasn't bolted to the floor is up on the ceiling all around us. Crates and tools, everything. Now you see why Trowbridge called this the handling room. They can handle any object by adjusting the gravity field, no matter how heavy. Yeah, including us. Wow, feel that. I'm pressing harder than ever against the ceiling. Trowbridge is increasing the gravity field. What's he going to do? Knock us out by giving us extra G's? I doubt that he has that much power. Well, it's strong enough so that I can't stand up on the ceiling. If he reverses it at this strength, we'll break every bit in our bodies when we hit the floor. Wow, this is awful. Just waiting for him to smash us down. Happy, look down there on the wall. See that switch box? Yes, sir. It's right by the outer loading hatch. Maybe a gravity control emergency switch. We can just turn that lever to the off position. But we can't reach it, sir. Not even if we could stand up. No, but there are a lot of objects around us up here in the ceiling. Small things we could throw. If we can hit that switch before Trowbridge reverses the gravity. There's a small crowbar. It's even hard to crawl with all this high gravity. There. Now take careful aim, Happy. Remember, be ready to duck. That bar is going to fall back up to the ceiling. Yeah, that's right. I'm glad you reminded me. Well, here goes. Oh, oh watch out. It's falling back. I didn't throw it nearly hard enough. I'll try it with this wrench. If you hit it, we'll have quite a drop to the floor. If I hit it, we'll stay here in the ceiling till we push ourselves down. Across your fingers. Hey, you hit it, sir. We're weightless again. All right, Happy. Easy now. Press against the ceiling with your legs. Push yourself down toward the door. Okay, careful now. Let's go. Of 
Come on, Curtis, quick. Getting to your ship. What'd you do with Corey? He's floating around in the handling room, up near the ceiling. What? Well, just as I was about to reverse the gravity pole and smash him to the floor, the field cut off. I guess I overloaded the coils. Come on, we gotta get out of here. Hurry, get it to your ship. All right, Trowbridge, stay right where you are. Corey! Commander, I didn't know you were here. Curtis, you had the right hunch in coming back here, but evidently you didn't know just how far Trowbridge really would go. But no, Commander. Uh, yeah, that's right, Curtis. I... I might even take a brainograph test. Happy, take Trowbridge into custody. No, you don't. Get your hands up, Cadet Curtis. Go on, you too, Corey. Hey, what is this? Curtis, are you out of your mind? <laughs> Good work, Curtis. Now, Corey, we'll see... Get him, Happy! <laughs> All right, you two, on your feet. I've got their weapons, sir. Commander, Trowbridge forced me to help him. He bribed two of Larkin's guards to heat up the hexaplast chamber. I didn't have a thing to do with it. Curtis, keep your mouth shut. You might as well let him talk, Trowbridge. We've got enough on you right now. Oh, Commander, I'll tell you everything. Honestly, I will. I only did what I did so, so I wouldn't lose my inspector's job. Curtis, you have a peculiar idea of an inspector's duties. Yeah, don't worry, Curtis. You'll still be an inspector. Uh, you can inspect the inside of a criminal rehabilitation center. <laughs> An action preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure in just a moment. Gang, everybody's talking about the projectoscope, and no wonder, it's terrific. Now, here's a boy who's been talking about his projectoscope since the moment he got it. That was on Saturday morning. Hey, Junior, look. I got my projectoscope. Man, it's really neat. Look at that. It's shaped like a real outer space rocket ship with tail fins and a radar antenna. Sunday night, and he's still going strong. Hey, Dad, turn out the light. There now. I'm going to show you some pictures on the wall with my projectoscope. That's Buzz Corey and Cadet Happy, you see there, in a real space patrol adventure. It's called Mighty Meteor, and there's three other adventures on the same film. And so it went with his friends on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Hey, look, look at Joe. Look at this projectoscope flash signals in the dark. See how fast I can blink it on and off? Then Thursday, Friday, and Saturday again. And this boy is still talking about his projectoscope. Now, don't cry, sis. I'll find that nickel you dropped here in the dark. See, I got my projectoscope in my pocket. And it's a swell flashlight, too. See that beam of light? Hey, here's your nickel, sis. Good old projectoscope. Gang, get yourself one of these wonderful projectoscopes. We have enough for all of you, and we'll send you on the day we get your order. Just buy a box of rice checks or wheat checks. Then, with your name and address, send 35 cents in coin and a rice checks or wheat checks box top to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. Write that down. Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. <laughs> And now, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Buzz and Happy have joined airlocks with a spaceship in which two criminals are holding Carol captive. Although the criminals have meekly surrendered over the space phone Buzz is still wary. Happy, I'm going to open the inner hatch. Have your ray gun ready. Yes, sir. You got us, Commander, with our hands up. Uh, look, I'll turn on the light so you can see better. Happy, the lights. <laughs> They're blinding, Commander. I can't see. Let them have it, Rambo. They can't see. They're helpless. Be sure to be with us next Saturday for the exciting story, The Cosmic Ray Detector, when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again bring you Space Patrol! <laughs> Special bulletin for boys and girls in Indianapolis, Indiana, and Washington, D.C. Buzz Corey's own space battle cruiser, the Ralston Rocket, will be in your area next week. Don't miss it. The Ralston Rocket! <laughs> Space Patrol, an original Mike Moser production starring Ed Kemmerer as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston and directed by Larry Robertson. Other players were Ken Mayer, Bela Kovach, Norman Jolly, and David Duval. Dick Tufel speaking. <laughs> <laughs>